Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Cody. Cody, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, I mean, as good as we can be, right? In these these crazy days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so this is, I guess, a a stream from quarantine. So, kind of a somber note, but um, I'm happy to do anything that feels somewhat normal, right? Uh, so. <laughs> For those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background on um, kind of who you are, what you're into, all that good stuff? Totally, yeah. So um, I've kind of been in in and out of like web development and and uh, just computer things in general. I'm um, always kind of had an interest in it, um, and uh, mostly been a web engineer for several years, and. Um, kind of in a moment of like serendipity kind of fell into this play canvas thing, um, through getting into WebGL. Mm -hmm. Um, and now I'm currently an engineer on the play canvas team, um, essentially building out, uh, new features for play canvas, whether that be things within the play canvas editor for handling assets or, um, working out different like issues within the engine. Um, that's kind of where I'm at now. I saw also have a couple like random, like open source WebGL things that work on like a little shader doodle kind of, uh, library um just various things tinker i tinker a lot um I, as uh, a as a fellow tinkerer i heavily yeah. approve <laughs> yeah um well that's that's very cool so uh you talked a little bit about uh play canvas let me switch over to the screen here i'm going to share your twitter page with everybody so that they can go follow you um uh, cody is halves on twitter um with Possibly my favorite Twitter display name that I've seen in a while. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so you work at Play Canvas. Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to give us kind of the, the, the high-level overview of, of what Play Canvas is? Sure. So Play Canvas is a HTML5 WebGL game engine. Um, it was uh, originally made um, by um, my boss, Will, Willie Scott. Um, it was made to uh, kind of solve a need where, or not really a need, but it's kind of saw, he saw WebGL and thought that the web would be an incredible delivery platform for, for games um, mm -hmm. because you don't need to download anything. You don't need to, you know, jump through all these hoops to play a game. You just go to a URL and you play a game. And then on top of that, how we could leverage the web as like a way, not just to deliver games, but to make them, mm -hmm. um, to kind of create this collaborative medium uh, for creating games. So it's a lot kind of like, if you ever use Unity at all, it feels, the UI feels a lot like kind of like a Unity Lite. Okay. Uh, except for the fact that it's all based on a web browser, it's all using WebGL. And due to that fact, you can collaborate with friends much like Google Docs or like CodePen collaborative mode or anything like that. So it's actually pretty, pretty fun. I know when I first started, it kind of blew my mind, like the ability to collaborate with people and whatnot. But That's accounts are free. Um, there are kind of like different like payment tiers, um, but they're not really necessary. Pretty much the whole feature sets within the free tier. Um, and then, uh, the engine itself is also open source. Um, so you can j use just the engine by itself if you don't want to use the editor. Um, but once you kind of see everything the ed editor gives you, I don't know why you'd ever want to use the engine standalone. Sure. Right yeah. Here? So I guess right now you're in the kind of like first view of like your first kind of, uh, like starter scene, they kind of give you this um, roll a ball around scene. So you can kind of go into that if you want, like press the main scene button there. Um, and we yeah. can kind of skip this intro maybe. Let's, I don't know. Yeah, let's go. Cool. I think I just have some like tool tips to kind of tell you what things are. Um, oh, but, I, uh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> cool. So in here, you'll kind of see like there's kind of like three panels and kind of a main view in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And it works much like any other 3D tooling. If you're not already familiar with 3D tooling, kind of in that main view, okay, yeah, you can press the play button there. That'll that'll kind of run your game for you. And that's kind of like in a live update mode. So things you ch change in the editor will update within uh, this kind of preview mode as well. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I have, I have made an unwinnable game, it appears. <laughs> yeah, I think, gotta, I think you gotta get some serious speed to get across that gap. <laughs> yeah. No, this is cool. Like I so and now does that mean okay, so I've added a thing and then I can just grab this and I wanna move it up. 
Exactly. Yeah. So, so within this view, you can kind of oh, click and drag. Oh, that's dope. And your camera as well. So, like, if you click off that asset and just kind of drag around, you can kind of uh, pan the camera around. Um, there's some hotkeys as well. Um, so, say you selected that asset, maybe you've like accidentally panned way off. If you press F, it'll refocus it. Um, is that working? <laughs> yeah. F. Yeah. Oh man, cool. this is so much cooler than uh, like. I love this kind of stuff because it it's very much a mystery to me. Like, I don't really get how it works. Um, right, right. So it, th this, like, I feel like this must be what um, what a lot of folks feel like when they first get into coding. And, like, they see the first thing happen and they go, oh, magic. Right? <laughs> oh, totally, yeah. I mean, that's, I feel like magic for me, for, for sure. That's, especially because a lot of the WebGL stuff I had been doing was all just straight, like, like coding out like a 3JS scene or something like that. So the fact that I could just kind of drag assets in and um, arrange them and build a whole scene out without ever having to really, you know, write all this boilerplate was really neat. Yeah. Um, look, at me, look at me winning this game. Like nothing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so what you're seeing there is kind of an interesting thing. We'll kind of get into that. Um, there's, the whole, there's a whole kind of physics system in the engine as well. And so okay. I think... You Dragged in a platform without a without a rigid body on it. Um, so actually, if you want to fix that um, that platform, you drag drag it in. Um, to get yeah, plane, um, just spelt wrong. <laughs> you probably should change that in our template. Um, so you can actually this uses what's called an entity component system. Are you okay. familiar with that at all? Not really. No. Um, so essentially like kind of high level, like you have like a whole graph of what are called entities and essentially it's any number of, you know, en entity can have any number of children. It's just kind of this big nested graph of entities and you can assign components to each entity that kind of give different behaviors or um, whatnot within the, the, the game. So on that plane entity, you can click on that again. If in the left side, you can kind of see your tree view in that panel on the left side. Yeah. Um, so that's taking another way you can kind of like select things. So the one you just drug in, I think, is the one just below teleporters. Got it. You select that um, on the right pane. It's kind of where you can see all the properties of that entity. So you can kind of see where it's placed in the scene. You can see all the different components it's already assigned. So right now you can see it has a model component that's kind of like telling it to render that little, you know, uh, rectangle or kind of plane. Sure. Um, so now if you hit add component there. Um, we can add a rigid body component, which is gonna tell it how it should behave within the physics system. So if you scroll down, it probably ended up down below the model component. And it's fine to just stay a static because oh. we're not moving that around. So we're gonna keep that a static rigid body with all the default settings. And let's add another component called collision component. Um, collision, okay. And that's actually telling this sh like the shape that it should be. So we're gonna have to change the half extent. We're probably gonna need to drop the Y down. Um, to like, I don't know, 0.1 maybe, uh, maybe even lower. I guess we can look at what the other ones are because <laughs> I'm sure the other ones also have <laughs> collision components on them. Um, collision, it's a mesh. Oh, and they're actually using the plane mesh. So actually, you're, yeah, rather than using the default uh, box, let's use the plane mesh. Okay. Um, so you can actually click the pencil there and then choose that plane mesh. Yep, Ooh, perfect. Okay. If you go back, your ball shouldn't fall through that plane. Because it should obey the, the physics. Okay. All right. So, uh, quick shout out to the chat. Thanks, y'all, for showing up. I see Gators and Ali Pixel. We got a whole forest full of friends in here. Um, Kramer and and Pilo, thank you so much for the subs. Uh, yeah, this is a an in browser WebGL powered HTML5 uh, game game dev platform. And so now, if I go to my platform, it's not falling through. Yay. That is super cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so now, at, at this point, so we've, we've kind of like, so this is cool, right? Like, the, this is undoubtedly cool. We could stop right here and say, look at this. Like, this is an in-browser editor. It's super cool. You can you can drag things around. And, and as I learn more about 3D, these things will start to make more sense, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not really where this stops, right? Because I can we can work on something collaboratively, which I think is... Right. That's where my mind really got blown when I learned about Play Canvas. So how do I do that? Like if I if we want to start a new project and you and I are going to build a game together, what what do I do? Yeah, so let's look kind of back out of this project. Um, you can kind of just go to back to like playcanvas.com root or yeah, 
I think, um, yeah, I'll just change your URL to playcams.com. Okay. And then go back that way. Um, cool. And then uh, we can go ahead and make a new project, and I'll have you add me to it. Is my internet slowing down on me? Here we go. Okay, cool. so here's... Yeah. Projects tab, um, and then you'll kind of see the new button in the top right there. Okay. You can name whatever you want. We will call this uh, on the JSON and public. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Do I yeah. want to do any any of this? Just blank projects. It's perfect. Okay. Well, that's a whole other thing that I'd love to get into at some point. Not this stream, but the the whole like web VR, web XR aspect of this, because it makes making things for the quests and stuff a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Is this your username on Play Canvas as well? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, awesome. And then can you give me right access across the drop down where it says read? Uh, change that to right. And then I will come and hop on that project. So if you hop into the editor. Um, kind of like we did before, select the default scene, which should just be untitled. Okay. Um, and I will, I will be there in just a moment. There are a lot of tooltips. Let me clear these real quick. Yeah. Which is actually like, if, if you we weren't on the stream and you were like just getting started, they're actually pretty handy. Yeah. You know? And yeah, I always there. make the joke that like I never do the guided tours on these because you are my tour guides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, scene yeah, there, always there's a way to kind of skip them all by, by default for a new user if they already know this stuff. Add to the notes of things to do. Cool. All right. Um, cool. So if you look in the kind of bottom left of that view now, you'll see like a chat thing, and you'll see like my icon down there, and you can even like talk to each other while you're working. Nice. Um, oh, so that if you chat at me, I'll see it. Good. It's pretty neat. And also, if you pan around in that scene. Um, you should see like what looks like a yellow kind of like prism at some point, and that's actually in my camera what I'm looking at. Oh, and, look at that! And it's like I can see a blue one, and that one's you. So you can kind of see what like other people are doing or looking at, or like say <laughs> I select, I select the box. You should see like a a little like yellow or orange tick mm -hmm. next to it in the tree view. Um, so you can see that like that's what I'm currently working on is the yeah. box. Um, that's kind of like a, a few different things. Like you can see me move the box around, um, and do things to the box. You can scale it way out or something. Um, and now to do that, you are over in. Yeah, I'm in the, in the I'm model. in the inspector over there on the on the actual entity, and I just scaled the scaled it and and why. Um, oh, I, I got it. Okay. Why. Which instead of doing the inspector, there's also so there's not just you know how you're like kind of clicking those uh, translate gizmos and it was sliding around. Mm -hmm. There's actually three other gizmos. You can get to them on the sidebar over there. It looks like a, a rotation and a resize. You can get to them there, or you can press one, two, or three on your keyboard, and essentially that'll change oh. your to different handles. You'll have a rotation handle or a scale handle. Nice. Which is pretty handy. Yeah, super handy. Okay, all right. Um, so I guess now we can get into kind of like um, the standard material, or kind of like what makes what gives things an appearance. So when you're when you're when you're like drawing a model or, or something out, like you kind of like you have something that defines all like the vertices or the shape of it, kind right. of run shape, and then you have um, something that's actually going to like draw pixels or like color or like kind of how it looks within the scene. That's like your material. Um, so to do that, if you want, you can kind of come, come down to this asset panel and click Add Asset, and we're going to make a new material. Um, the, the asset panel is the bottom, the bottom panel. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Um, Assets. And Add there's a asset. little cluster. Yep. Perfect. Material. OK. And so now you're going to see a whole bunch of settings. You can name it if you want. We can just keep a new material. Um, you're gonna see a whole bunch of settings. Um, if you scroll down in that, um, kind of like the default color of like an object emits is its diffuse color. So if you go to diffuse, um, and then come down to color, you can make that like red or something. Okay. 
Um, and then go back to to the box, or maybe let's put on the plane. Let's do it to the plane. Uh, so click on the plane, the treaty, if you want, um, on to the left. And then um, where it says material empty, you can click the the edit there, and then click on that red material. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. And now if you press and play in your in your kind of run the scene, you'll also see that it's red right in the the run scene as well. Just to kind of look at it. Cool. And so like, and, and now there's nothing happening here because we haven't assigned any like properties to things, right? So like right. the box doesn't have weight or we haven't put any physics rules in. Um, right. And I assume that's all stuff that we just, we get to like click around and that happens, right? Yeah, we are, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We can add some, we can add some physics. There's actually pretty much everything scriptable as well. And that's where things can start to really get exciting. That's where it starts to actually become a game. Yeah. Uh, so just like the static thing. Um, so I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to change this plane into, um, a different shape. We have a couple other primitives. Um, for instance, we have a cylinder primitive, so I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to make it a cylinder. Oh, nice. Um, and let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, like 12 by 12. We're just going to make like kind of like a little platform to play this game on. Um, and I'm just kind of like... For like doing like precise edits, I usually use the inspector on the right side instead of using the gizmos. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit bigger of a uh, a plane. I'm gonna kind of recenter this cube. Okay. We're just gonna first just kind of play around with like see if we can script this cube to kind of move around on this on this uh, new thing we made. Um, we'll get into scripting a little bit. Okay. Just kind of resetting all the properties here. Um, Cool. Um, and I guess we need to move it up a little bit out of here. We want like 0.5, right? To yeah. put it on the on the plane. Sweet. Cool. Um, so now we can try to script this cube if we want. Um, so if you click on the I guess you're already on it. So hit add component on the right there. Okay. Um, and add script. Mm -hmm. And that'll add a component at the very bottom. If you scroll down to that, you'll see this kind of add script button. You can add a new script. You can make one. You can call it like controls.js if you want. Um, I'm so glad that you just said .js and not like, now we're going to write Rust. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to write BitCode. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. The other kind of like really cool thing about this is since it is an HTML5 game engine, like, you have all the browser APIs at your disposal. You have JavaScript at your disposal. Yeah. Um, which is pretty neat. So like, like you can use the device orientation API and, and that previous, the kind of template game you were in first. Um, like I made a version of that that you like tip your phone around and it rolls the ball around. Um, oh, and just, cool. And just a web API. Like it just came for free, you know? Yeah, the, uh, what, is, what is that? The accelerometer, right? Is yeah. that what it is? The device orientation API, yeah. Nice, yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so now if you double click on that controls JS, it'll pop open a code editor. Yep. Um, which much like any other kind of collab edit, we can both kind of type in there. So I can open that up and I can be like, hello. Um, so cool. Um, and every script kind of comes with this boilerplate. There's kind of like two default methods and you'll kind of notice like it uses a little bit more of like an older, like ES5 kind of syntax at the moment, um, kind of building out these classes. Um, and so these two default methods initialize gets called when something's first enabled within the scene okay. and up called every single frame. So if you've ever done like any other kind of like animation using request animation frame loop, it's essentially that it's a request animation frame loop. Okay. And it, and the time since last frame has the only kind of parameter in that update function. Um, so for our controls, uh, there's a bunch of things that come for free within the play campus API. Um, for instance, uh, or I guess let's let's not even do controls yet. So you can access like the entity that a script is attached to with just this dot entity, and all this stuff is documented in the is API that here. Um, this exactly uh, yeah, in the scripting, and then so if you go to that, um, it, it'll kind of get into script a bit, and then the rest of this stuff that I'll be doing is kind of just all throughout the API ref, um, which is also on this site. Um, 
which covers like all the properties that are available on an entity or all the all the properties for each component like how do how do i change you know like a material color via script and stuff like that that'll be in that apiref there yeah top right oh um, cool okay all right so for instance i think the script mentioned that you can access entity on it um and pc.script maybe um let's see da, 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 da. Perhaps not. Maybe it was in that initial tutorial. Um, it might just be under entity. But then, yeah. Oh, no, properties. that's a new one. Yeah, properties we're about to access are all going to be on this class entity. Um, Got it. Okay. Um, oh, there's a lot in here, huh? Yeah, it gets pretty deep. Um, but it's also very comprehensive. Like, there's... there's. And is this a wrapper around, um, like, just straight up, uh, just straight up, WebGL, or is this like, are we getting into something like, and I'm going to just say names that I know, not because I think it's correct, like GreenSock or um, like the other kind of JavaScript animation APIs? Yeah, so this this uh, Play Canvas engine has zero dependencies. It's not like okay. uh, using 3JS or anything else under the hood. Um, I gotcha. And the API does have, again, it holds like a lot of like similarity with Unity though, um, which is kind of nice coming from like, if, again, as someone that like, didn't used to make a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I can watch a Unity tutorial and kind of like maybe how someone scripts a camera out and gives it like an interesting behavior. And that's somewhat translatable to Play Canvas. Um, like you can okay. do very similar things because the API has some similarities. Um, it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, these are kind of all the globals that are on PC. We're, trying, we're actually about to use some of those. We're going to use nice. like key up and key down. These are okay. So I'm going to keep, keep, I'll keep that alive then. Oh, yeah. oh, we were going to show, um, so this, this is the, um, so the play canvas engine is open source. So like we're using the, the kind of closed source editor, right? And like, the, so, right. so this part is the part that you would, that you would theoretically, uh, if you needed to, you would upgrade to pay for. Um, mm -hmm. but if you just want to like run this, the whole thing is, is actually an open source. Yeah. Which it, along with that, if you ever like feel like there's a feature, like, you'd like, you can, you know, make an issue, make a pull request. It's, it's a very open kind of like, we actually have a repo also for the editor, but it's just for taking issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so it's a, you can, you can definitely consume the engine on standalone, um, which is fine. It's like coding out any other kind of WebGL thing. Um, but using the editor, um, really speeds things up and makes your life a lot easier, uh, which we'll kind of see when we get into kind of building out things like, um, having like, an environment map that's kind of like doing like environment based lighting and stuff like that kind of stuff comes yeah. from easily which is really neat um, you, you made a you made a comparison when we were when we first jumped on the call before we went live which was that, that this feels a lot like code pen um mm -hmm. and i i feel like that's that's kind of the benefit right is like using something like this or like code pen you you're not just writing code and then you have to kind of like fire it up to see if it worked it's like you get this instant feedback loop yeah um which i i have really come to appreciate especially when we're doing more visual things right and with a, a right. game like games are so visual um that not having that visual feedback loop feels like it would just be really uh it just add a layer of difficulty on this so you know mad props to the game devs who are not using those types of tools but for for a right. noob like me this feels like the only way I'd be able to get anything done is by seeing what happens when I click buttons. Totally. Yeah. That's, I mean, same, like, again, like my, my background was in web. So like, I think pretty much all of us that are like web and JavaScript engineers are kind of brats when it comes to that. Like <laughs> if I can't see it instantly, like I give up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's why this was like great for me. Cause, cause again, so many, so much other people making games, like you have to wait for things to compile and it's like, it's kind of this whole process, and certainly that's been sped up over the years. Um, but the fact that, again that I can press play button, it's kind of running real time, is is great for me because I, I need that feedback loop. I would never learn anything without it. Totally, totally. Wait, I think I have a, a I think I have a, a sound effect for for my willingness to work without visual feedback. And that's just not something I'm willing to do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, all right, so okay, so we we are in here. We've got uh, we've grabbed the entity out of the just kind of the global window object. Um, uh, this, yeah, the script. So essentially, when you attach a script to to an entity, you can access 
couple different things, and, and that that's mostly just on that script classes this that entity, um, sort of kind of pulling the entity it's attached to off of this. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, yeah, because there's a couple other things. I think there's like this dot app, which kind of is the actual global app. Okay. Um, this dot entity is the actual like thing we've attached this script to. Nice. Um, okay. So we're just going to want to like translate it. So there's actually and there's actually a lot of nice um, like code completion in here. Like you'll see entities there. A lot of that comes for free. Um, it looks like translate's not there. Um, but we're going to translate it. Um, and that takes in a, a vector 3. Um, so essentially, you just like we're moving in 3D, so x, y, z. x, y, z. Uh, um, so if you want, we can just translate it like 1, 1, 0. And again, this is going to get called every frame. And so that's going to move 1, 1 to the x, 1 to the y, and, and not up or down. Uh, so actually, yeah, we want we actually want to move it, I guess, in, in z space and not not y. So yeah, because our our plane is a is a x z plane. Um, that makes sense. Oh right, because y is up and down. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. I, I'm going to learn to think in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, takes, it takes a second for sure. It does. All right. Uh, and so, so upon saving this, if we go back out and we just like hit launch, we should see it just start moving, right? Yeah, we should see it kind of like cruise across because essentially that's going to move a, a meter every frame because every all the so it's already like oh, ran wait. off the screen our very zoom, fast. Our zoom was wrong, or my zoom was wrong. So actually, so the view in the scene is the camera's view. So it doesn't matter what you set here. It's actually what matters. If you look in that hierarchy to the left again, there's a thing called camera. Camera. Um, yeah. And okay. that's actually what the view of your game is going to be. Um, okay. And perfect. so I want to move that back a bit. And that'll change it. Well, the reason we didn't see the cube this time is, is because that, that script is making it move so fast. I got you. <laughs> I yeah. have it set to, to, to one meter and one meter. If I change it to like, I don't know, 0.01 or something, it, life, will, life will get a lot better, um, which I just did. This is fun. Um, this is really cool. And so we're, what we're doing here is like we're basically like a movie director. We're framing a shot. Exactly. Um, which I think is such a cool, like this is the kind of stuff that I, that I always find just fascinating because now we're, we're not just doing web dev, right? We're also doing like art direction and cinematography and we're, we're moving into this idea of like what does the thing look like because the like this this view here that i just did is like this is not a particularly interesting view right we're we're it's cool it's very good for like debugging i can see exactly what's going on here's our cube it's sliding off the screen that's awesome mm -hmm. uh but like if we wanted if we wanted like cinematography we need to like we need to like zoom in right I gotta figure mm -hmm. out how to actually do that. Which you can also script the camera, and that's where things again things get really interesting and really fun. Um, which you again we'll get into. Here a oh man, bit. I'm so excited for all of this. <laughs> and so now now we've got like that's kind of like a scene, right? And so now this is gonna have some some actual like visual interest a little bit. Like you know, I'm not uh, again yeah. not not gonna end up on the on the Academy Awards for this, but <laughs> yeah. like, it's uh it, it's just it's very cool. Like I like I like just the the it's a whole different creative muscle, right? I think it's very yeah. cool. Which also, if you stay in that view again, the the live update works for everything except for script changes. So go back to the the live the kind of preview. Oh, so this will uh, just like keep... and so I like say for instance, I drag the camera. Um, I can actually drag it around, and it will update your view as well. Oh, cool! Which is pretty fun. Um, there's actually one time I was I was making this little like feral hog kind of like meme game, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, I had a friend that was he was in there kind of building the terrain while I was running around as a hog. And it was nice <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, oh, who remembers that meme? I know that was that was a decade ago. Jeez. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we've got so we've got a plane. We've got a surface for our game to exist on. Um, mm -hmm. But really, it's it's not it's not actually a plane. It's just a shape. Yeah, and I guess we've got so we've got a shape and then another shape on top of it, and they're moving around, um, but mm -hmm. they're not like interacting with each other or anything. Yeah, there's so, no physics. 
involved yet. We're just kind of translating things around. Okay. So um, where would you want to go from here? Let's let's move to like actually make it to our translations are being controlled by us. Um, okay. So let's add some controls to that, and then we'll get back to the physics bit. Um, okay. So in that script again, um, if you want, go ahead and create um, just a, a, a two quick variables, and you're gonna have to write the word var because <laughs> it'll, it'll throw errors for, or not errors, but warnings for let and. Oh, const. I got you. Okay. Because it is all ES five. Um, let's make it an X and a Z variable. Um, like just, just kind of like, yeah, like they, yeah. Just kind of like instantiating them. We can set them to, I guess, zero for now. Um, we'll actually make it a, a Z one, um, instead of Y. Cause again, we're moving kind of like in terms of the plane. Okay. Uh, and then essentially we're just going to make four F statements based on our, our, um, our four you know, key, key controls. Um, so, uh, sorry for the number oh. four. <laughs> oh, 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 if statements. Got it. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and so this is kind of those constants you're looking at. There's a bunch of, uh, constants that we're, we're going to use. Um, so you can access the actual app with just this dot app. Okay. So I'll uh, go in here. Uh, and do I want to do this in here? Like this dot app? Yeah. I think it's this dot app dot input. Um, that keyboard. Um, so that's another thing is like a lot of a lot of things like mouse and keyboard and stuff is all kind of already set up for you. You don't have to do any of this kind of like okay. out event listener key down or any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's already there as this kind of input object. Um, and so now we have. Uh, I think the last thing we're going to do is dot is pressed. It's keyboard dot is pressed, and that's camel case. Okay, and is that uh, uh, is that a boolean or is that like a function? So that'll be a function, and now okay. we're that's we're going to use we use those constants. We're going to pass in kind of different key codes, and those are already constants on the PC object. So PC dot key underscore up, key underscore down, all that kind of jess. Is pressed. Does it show the? So I think it's just showing that you can pre pass in a number, and then back on oh, that. Oh, it doesn't. On was the list of constants kind of on PC object to the very first, um, yeah, on this Oops, page. The underscore, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, nice. Okay, so we, we can do uh, key left, key up, key down, key right. Is that exactly mm -hmm. nice? Okay, very cool. All right, so we want to do where am I going? I'm going back into here. And so if we get, uh, is it just PC dot key up? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Then I would want to Z plus plus. Exactly. I guess I'd probably want to do like a little bit less, uh, less intense maybe. Or no, um, we can, we can just we'll plus keep plus. it all one. We'll keep it all one. Yeah. Just like plus equals one or plus plus. Yeah. Okay. And then I can duplicate this. So since we're going to do the same thing. Down yeah. is going to be minus uh, x will be left and right. So and the reason I always do it this way instead of like else is, is that way like if you press like up and down, they both cancel and you get zero movement rather than oh, like I got you. unpredicted movement. Oh, wait, I need x's. And so those, yeah, those ones would be x instead of z. Okay, so now I've got this saved. Do I, I can just reload this? Um, not yet. So we're right now we're just changing variables. Um, oh, so I'm going to yeah, do okay. translate command down below that. Um, oh, and then, okay. So now I want to change these to be our variables, X and X and uh, Y. X totally. And Which again, now, now that it's one, it's going to be flying across the screen, but I'm going to have us do one other slight change. Um, common practice when you're doing kind of animation in a loop like this is to multiply any of your changes by that delta time. So I'm going to come here and just multiply by dt. OK, and, and where did we get dt? Oh, that this is the dt. Yeah, so that's the time since last frame. And, and the reason you do that is so like, if say you have a really, really fast frame rate, uh -huh. you don't want your character to be moving faster just because you have a fast frame rate, or moving slower because you have a slow frame rate. You want it to always be based on the time since last frame so that it's always moving at the same speed regardless of frame rate. 
Okay. So I, I also just realized that this isn't going to work because every time that the frame updates, we're resetting it to zero. So do I need to move these as to be like global? So it starts at zero and then updates? So that's actually fine because what we're doing is we're calling entity.translate and entity is picking up, like it's, it's moving by that amount each frame. Uh, oh, okay. So it's moving relative to itself every frame. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. So now theoretically save this out and launch, we should have some sort of controls based on up, down, left, right. Okay. So I have, oh wait, it doesn't like, cannot read property keyboard oh. of undefined. Maybe I messed something up there. Let's go into the yeah, app. This dot app. Maybe this dot. I just this side up that keyboard. My bad. That's me. Uh, not knowing my own API well. <laughs> I'll fix it. Okay, you got it. This cool. dot app dot keyboard. Okay. Launch. I got those backwards, but. Uh, Awesome. Okay, I'm going to switch these up so that they move the way I expect them to. Okay. Now reload and check this out. Rot, you right? Are you watching? Up, down, left, <laughs> right. Look at that. It works. Don't judge my non clacky keyboard, you keyboard nerds. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, this, I mean, this is a game, right? Like, 100 points. 100 points, you win. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm doing, uh, just to, to test it, I'm actually hitting two keys at once now to get it to move diagonally. Uh -huh. And it works. So we're, we're getting the expected behavior, right? So that's, uh, that's very cool. Nice. Cool. Um, I guess maybe another thing to get started with is... <laughs> I just very, very much offended the chat by showing my keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a few unfollows. <laughs> okay. Um, so, all right. So we, we've got... Um, now we've got the ability to move things. Mm -hmm. um, what should we do next? Um, so, so right now you can kind of move, like if you move that cube too far close to you, it's out of view. Yeah. So maybe we should probably script the, script the camera so where it actually follows the movement of our, of our cube character. Yep. That sounds good to uh, me. So if you go and select the camera, um, in the tree view. Camera. Which looks like we have. Oh, wait, I unselected it. Here we go. And I want to add a script, right? Yep. Okay. Where we go down here. And we'll call this camera. You just call it camera or like camera follow or whatever you want. Corgi. Camera follow. Making it uh, making it making it work. Corgi, good drop. Ooh, we should have done that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the character. We can find a character and that that's a corgi and use that for our game. Oh my god, can we? Yeah, we'll do that. Yes. <laughs> um, awesome. So this we're actually gonna start using some uh, part of the scripting system called script attributes. So if you go back to those, that API ref for scripts, um, PC script, which I think even, even that link, I think the manual link to, to scripting actually might even be a better, better reference because it kind of walks. Actually, let's see. I can even send you the link. If you manual want. link to scripting. Here we go. Script attributes, you said? Yep. Okay. So we create a script, and then the script gets attributes, and so we can add different attributes to it. Okay, so we get exactly. speed. And so what does that mean? Like, what if I add an attribute, is that arbitrary? I just set whatever I want on it? Essentially, yeah. So, so essentially what you're doing there is rather than, because again, having an editor like Play Canvas allows people like art directors to kind of get involved in making the game. Okay. And maybe they, maybe they don't know JavaScript and can script things out. So a lot of times an engineer will write a script. Oh and my God. A I bunch just, of parameters. this just, I just realized what we're doing. So we're building yeah. out a UI panel. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's super cool. <laughs> um, so the kind of attribute type we're going to use is called target. Okay. Um, you'll see that kind of, you scroll down the attribute types. You can see, you see they're doing like my script that attributes that add target type entity. Got it. Okay. So essentially you're just going to, you know, if you want, you can even like copy pasta that and change it to, you know, our script name. 
Um, I, I'm going to type it out longhand because it makes me uh, it makes me remember things. Do we want to do this on initialize? Um, it's actually going to be outside of, of either of the methods because it's something that we're actually adding to the script class. Okay, so but, we're going to do camera follow dot attributes mm -hmm. and dot add, and then we're going to put in a target, and yep. the type was entity. Yep, type entity, and if you want, you can say like default null, or it defaults to null anyway. I'm just kind of weird with being verbose. Um, I, mean, I am I am always a fan of being super clear about things. So um, we'll add one more attribute as well because okay. we want to kind of like be able to art direct the distance of the camera from the character. So let's just add a distance attribute. That'll just be a type number. Uh, distance, and that is a type number. And what should we default to here? Um, let's just say like five for now. Um, just kind of like spitball it. Because again, we can change it in the editor, and then it's then at that point it doesn't matter what the default okay. is. So now I've done this. So now if you my... go down, and there's a kind of refresh looking button that essentially parses the script and tells the engine about it, um, or the yeah, that parse button there that works as well. Okay. Uh, so it's saying that you have two two attributes, and if you click back on camera now, you'll see those. Wow. Okay. So now I'm selecting my entity, but I don't have one. It looks like. Yeah. So you have to select the cube in the in the either in the probably in the tree view would be the best way to do it. Okay. Got my got my box. Well, so so go back to camera and and hit choose target again. Sorry, the UI is a little little takes a bit to get used to. Select entity. Uh, so oh, select entity. Oh, I get it. Okay. Preview. Perfect. All right, so I've, I've chosen my entity, and my distance is 5. So now if we go back to that script, we can start kind of writing a script that's going to do things. Because right now, those are just values that aren't really doing anything in our script. So, right. so those are going to be accessed. It's just going to add those to the, to the class. So you'll have this.target, and that's going to be another entity class, but it's going to be our box now, because that's what we chose as target. OK, so okay, and I can just use that anywhere. Mm-hmm. OK. Now we also have this dot distance, which is just going to be that number. Got it. Okay. Um, so kind of the first thing I would do is in that update, so we don't get any weird errors. So like for instance, maybe you added that script and hadn't selected a target yet. Okay. Let's just add like a quick escape hatch that's just like if this dot target is not defined, return. So you can just do like a if exclamation this dot target exactly. Okay. Um, just return out to kind of escape and not have any errors because we're going to start getting things from target. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is entities have a method that gets its position within the world called get position. Okay. So you do this dot target dot get position. And do um, I want to like, sorry, yeah, assign that to a variable? Yeah. So like pause or position or something like that. Dot target dot get position like this. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's going to return you a new. Um, this is a class called a PC vec three. It's a just a a vector um, with X Y Z. Okay, uh, and does that mean that I can do like pos dot or pos dot x? Ex exactly. Yeah. No, okay. right, so we're we're gonna change those to like you know do like pos dot x is plus equals you know and minus equals. Got it. Just like move the camera around. Maybe we'll do it in z. We we'll like pos dot z, um, like minus equals um, the this dot distance, and, and maybe we'll and add a multiplier there eventually. But when we uh, so. When we're changing this, though, we're changing it for our camera, right? Well, right now we're changing. So, so I guess I wasn't super clear. So that get position will return a new vec three. So right now it's just a it's just a variable as a vec three. Eventually, we're going to apply it to the camera. Okay. So we're when I make changes to that vec three before we apply it to the camera. Okay. And so you're saying like just do something like this? Yeah. My, yeah. Minus equals this dot distance, um, and then maybe it, like we'll do pos y. Um, plus equals this dot distance. Um, we'll probably want to add some multipliers there because we don't really want to make it go way high up in the sky. Um, so maybe like this dot. So for y, do like this dot distance times 0.3 or something. Okay. Just so a little bit less extreme. Um, which we could also just make those two different attributes if we wanted to, but I figure we'll just link them together and kind of. Yeah, make it, it seems it seems like a it seems easy enough to like derive it, right? Um, and so I'm also going to have us make, this is, we'll actually make some, a new vector that's attached to the class. Um, so let's go back to initialize. 
Okay. Um, and let's make a vector that's going to be kind of like help us track the position of the camera. So we'll just say like this dot vec or like this dot like two position or something like that. Um, and just make that equal to, um, and you'll do new PC dot capital VEC three. Okay. So since you were just creating a new vec three, um, and when we initialize like that, it's just going to be zero, zero or zero, zero, zero. Um, and we're going to use, let's go to the API ref really fast, just to kind of like walk through some of the things that freeze can do. Um, are you familiar with the term lerp? I am not. Um, essentially, that's like interpolating between two values. OK. Um, so for our vec3, we can we have two different vectors, and they have, they have a, a, lerp proper, or a lerp method that um, essentially helps you interpolate between two 3D points or two three vectors. Um, OK. So that, OK, I've got this, the lerp. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to, we just want to lerp that vector that we made between the, the this dot vec that we made and um, the position of the, our. Um, OK, so this we, dot vec the... dot lerp. And then mm -hmm. I would set pos dot. So let's let's just pass in this dot vec again. So we want we want we want to lerp from like whatever this dot vec's last position was to this new position we just calculated, um, which is that just pos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the the last the last um, value in that lerp is just kind of like a like weights for the lerping, and so we'll we'll just do like point one. Okay, and can you talk a little bit about what that means? That's like kind of weighting the amount of alert, like 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 deciding how much to interpolate between those two values. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, it, when so, you, guess, so interpolation in this sense, can you can you talk a little bit about what's like what's actually happening? What's the? Uh huh. Um, well, actually, let's do this. Let's not do the lurping stuff. Okay. Um, We'll just do it without lurk, and then we'll add the lurk to it. Yes, um, that would be great to see to see how it works. So let's just do so after that comment that you just did. Let's do this entity that set position just to that pos um, that we made. Set position, and then can I pass in the pos, or yep. do I need? Okay, exactly. I yeah, just pass in a vec three, and it will set the the entity that it's attached to, which again is the camera. Mm -hmm. um, to this pos that we just calculated off of. The target. Okay. And so if I reload, this should just work now? It should just work. Yeah, you see the camera. I don't know what the camera's going to be looking at. Um, we'll find out in a second. <laughs> Not the right thing. Oh, but it is moving. Around. That's yeah. good. Okay. So Let's we can... Moving around directly. So let's add one more thing. Um, there's, a, there's a really handy method called look at. So we'll also do this dot entity that look at um, and do this dot target. We'll do that right after the set position. Oh, do it after. Got it. Yeah. This dot entity dot look at like this. Mm -hmm. And then this dot target. Yep. Okay. Did I do something wrong? That's uh hmm. this dot entity look at this dot target. This dot entity look at this dot target. <laughs> That seems strange. Um, you saved out, right? I know it's kind it of a weird question. Let me let me close this and I'll sure. open it again. Does this need to does this need to parse again? It shouldn't need to parse again. Yeah, it's weird that it's not even looking at it. Either that or it hmm. funky. Let's double check that look at method, see what we got wrong. Um, uh, what part of the ref would that be in? Because it's not. So it'll be it'll be a property on entity. Um, I'm going there as well, just to be sure. Look at position. Do I need to send in the, the position? 
So the we just, so we we sent in the position that it should look at. Um, that's the well, we we sent in the entity. Oh right right right. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, so just do okay. get position again if you want on there. This stuff target that get position. Or uh, it, we don't oh. want to send the modified position because it can't really look at itself. Um, but yeah, that's my, my fault there. No, no, all good. Mubby. Okay, all right. Cool. So now Cameron's going to kind of always look at the cube. Yeah. Oh. It's kind of it's like rigidity to it, like the camera just like moving and it doesn't feel very fluid. Yep, and now my uh, my controls are backward again, <laughs> so I can I can fix those real quick so the controls do what I want. Um, let's open this one up, and then I'm going to plus plus minus minus plus 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 minus. Okay, refresh, and now up goes up, down goes down, left and right. Okay, we're getting what we wanted. Cool. So let's add back that, that alert bit that we were going to do. Essentially, that's just going to add some kind of fluidity to the camera motion. Um, so again, all this is doing is kind of like rather than immediately going, it's like setting it to the calculated value based on the target, we're just going to kind of smoothly like transition um, the camera position. Okay. Um, so now instead of the this dot target dot get position, just pass in this dot back. All right, to the no, sorry, to the position. My, my bad. Okay, so this dot back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, cool. So yeah, it gets a little bit of like a zoom and a. Um, you can kind of see like when I'm moving down. It's kind of like trailing a little bit, and then it catches exactly. up when I stop moving. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Kind of That's very cool. Fluid camera motion. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of tweak that. Like if we wanted to, maybe we could put that, um, like roll that lerp um, parameter into another attribute, so an art director can kind of choose how much is lerping. Right. Um, well, yeah. Because if I so if I change this, like if I make this one, is this going to be chaos mode? Um, one should go back to just straight changing. I'm trying to remember the. Oh, yeah. okay. So if I make it like really low, then it should really lag. Yeah, you probably have to hard refresh. refresh the scripts. Don't exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Oh yeah, look at it go. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, and you can just kind of see it resetting. Mm -hmm. Kind of slowly catches up mm -hmm. to the position it should be at. That's really fun. Like that. I love this too because like it it just that tiny little change just made this feel a little bit more alive like it, like if if you were you know in a world and kind of watching something run around you wouldn't totally. be like glued to it right you would kind of like oh it's going that way and then you kind of follow after it right it's just it, that's it's nice yeah so let's maybe like get out of scripting for a little bit and let's okay. get back to kind of like a little, some more of the kind of like making it look pretty, um, get some more into some of the material settings. And mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add a couple of textures to the asset panel there. Um, just some images that I already kind of have from okay. other projects. Let me get them really fast. Um, we're going to make what's called a cube map, um, which essentially is, is, um, you have a, a cube, and it's just textures that kind of go on, on the inside of a cube or outside of a cube. Um, it's like a texture that's meant to cover or the inside or outside of a cube. I got you. And uh, and so like, what uh, what you're talking about now is so like if if I was going to build a uh, a for real game, I'm going to have like buildings and ground, and so I would need rocks and dirt and grass and stuff. And so the the images would be a way for me to kind of fake that. I could have like an image of grass that I could stick on the outside of a box and it wouldn't be like a full on texture, but it would like kind of look like grass. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, so that's a cube, like for the sky box we're going to make is, is, is a cube. We're using a cube map for it. And the sky box is kind of like your like global environment. It'll be kind of like what's in the background of everything. Okay. Um, like for instance, if you Google search like, like free sky, sky box images, you'll get a lot of these like photorealistic ones of people that go out with like HDR cameras and, um, 
kind of see how like like those ones that look like a, a plus sign almost like essentially those six images make up the oh and so then this wraps in a circle uh wraps in a cube yeah exactly oh right in a cube yes um and so i'm gonna use one that's a little bit less photorealistic i have, like this kind of space skybox that i like a lot okay um so let me just drop those files in really fast which i mean unless you see a photorealistic one or like a skybox on google you like better because i think it'd be it'd be neat to i don't know do something that you think is is fun um otherwise i'll just drop these in there yeah let's let's do one of those um yeah i think the the fun part will be let's see if we can find a, a corgi to run around this map okay cool so i'm just gonna put those in a folder so okay. i just made a asset called skybox um i want to leave time for the corgi so let me know if we're like good on time still uh we've got about 35 minutes cool okay so all i did there is just drag and drag and drop those in like you can just drag and drop or upload images these are just straight up images yeah uh, there's some standard naming conventions to skybox imagery um like neg x or like left um, which is actually going to come in handy in a second, because um, if you want to go ahead in that folder, press mm -hmm. the plus button again. We're going to make a new asset called a cube map asset. Cube map. Um, and then you name it like skybox or something. Yeah. Okay. And you can scroll to the bottom where it shows faces. If you just Ooh. drive right, like space neg x onto left. Um, the editor knows a lot of like the default naming conventions, which supply the rest for you. Wow. And now if you scroll back up to the top, you can kind of preview your cube map. You like click and drag inside there. Holy buckets. <laughs> and this is where it gets pretty nuts, really, really nuts. So click on that skybox asset in the asset panel. Skybox asset in the asset panel. Wait, uh, here? Uh, right down here. Yep. Um, the actual um, cube map, sorry. Here. Um, the... Yeah, and then just drag that into the background in the scene. Just like click it and drag it into the background. What? <laughs> oh man, that is really cool. Okay, so now we're moving in space. Except they won't fall, sadly. No, actually... That's still cool though. Like now we can <laughs> we can kind of play around. Yeah, this okay, so this is awesome. Like, this is very cool. So now I'll actually do one more thing to that cube map, too. Um, right. Go to the bottom of the, its uh, inspector panel. You'll see a button that says pre-filter cube map. Okay. Essentially, that's pre-filter it to use for environment-based lighting. And so, so once you do that, click that button, um, you'll see all the lighting in the scene kind of, like, is now based on uh, the skybox as well. Yeah, click back on the box and press F or something from the. Okay, so I don't like I don't it, quite understand what happened, but so so go back to the cube map asset and watch it delete the pre-filtered data. Um, so you can kind of see it happen. You should see the lighting change a little bit. I didn't. Or actually, we'll tease it out. We'll we'll tease it out. Uh, we can kind of get a better feel for it. Let's um. Our uh, our red material. Let's make that a more interesting material. Let's make it kind of glassy. Okay. So back in the root of your assets, I guess you're already there. Um, yes. Click on the the red sphere. So you actually go to the material inspector for it. Okay. Um, and then scroll down past diffuse, and we'll go to specular. Specular is essentially defining kind of how light behaves on our material. And so we'll do things like click use metalness, um, and then scroll down even further. Actually, leave metalness off because we're going to make it kind of glassy. Okay. Uh, but crank gl glossiness all the way up. Oh, okay. So now it's like, now we can see the reflection, and that's because we did the pre-filtering. Exactly. I got you. Okay. Because all all the, the lighting is going to be based on that pre-filter data. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm I'm in. I got this. Oh, and you can um, see down here as it changes to like the material is like so. This is completely matte. And then mm -hmm. as you drag to the right, you can see that. Cool. Very cool. And you can also see it up at the top as well. The There's a kind of like the preview of your material. So you kind of get two places. You can kind of if you scroll back up in the material editor. Um, 
you see oh, it. Oh, got it. Yep. You, like, sphere, and you actually click and drag that sphere to kind of like get a feel for like how light behaves on it. Um, just handy. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, and you can see the even the bottom of the map is showing the reflections. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. So let's change the diffuse back to like grayish or something instead of red. Um, or just whatever you like best, but. That's kind of a cool color. And then we can scroll down more in that material inspector. Material um, inspector. And we can even kind of like, so go to the opacity settings. Um, and you're going to change blend type to alpha. So it's actually changing like the alpha bit of the opacity. And you can kind of bring intensity down. Um, and you kind of like start to make it kind of more glassy. Um, yeah, so now it's like you can see through it, but it still has some reflection. Mm -hmm. And then you can even get into there's even even more settings for like changing how like the refractions happening through the glass and it, it can get pretty deep. I don't want to get too far with it, but um, I think that'll be done in environment. Yeah. Very cool. Refraction. Oh, like it changes the way the. Cool. But so now we kind of have this more glassy, glassy plane to kind of run around on. Mm -hmm. um, at least makes it makes the scene a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe we should go find a corgi now. Let's um, do it. There's a really cool website called Sketchfab, um, and they have a lot of free assets on there. We want to find a, a some kind of corgi FBX. You search. Corgis and, and FBX. I already, I already have an account, um, so I can go ahead and download it if you don't feel like making an account. See if there's any free ones. If not, like, can we? Is there I a way to like buy and don't. sort? Um, I think you can choose free somewhere on here. Downloadable? Sure. Maybe it's filters. I guess you already have filters popped open. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can find a free core on Sketchfab too. We'll, we'll tag team it. How can you tell if they're free? Um, on the store part of it, it should have like a... Because uh, some of these, it looks like it has a price, and some of them doesn't. Um, let's see. I'm logging in as well. Sorry, one second. Corgi in a banana suit? Oh, oh that's boy, not... I might just need to pay for that. That is... <laughs> That is really good. Does it come with any animations? Does it say, like, I guess it's not animating. This one's not animated, no. Uh, Let's see, there was there was an animated one up here. This one animated. Traveling Corgi. Oh, that's amazing. Can I filter for animated? Yes. Corgi Banana Expansion Pack. That sounds great. Can you walk, though? Like, show me what you got. Oh, yeah, so there's sleeping, so you lying down. It looks like you can change... Uh, sleeping, lying down, alternative sitting. Uh, you don't have any walk ones. <laughs> okay, so that, that's fun, but that's not what we need. Um, let's, let's keep looking. Wait, where'd it go? Corgi. Animated. This guy. He looks like he, he looks like he scampers. Oh, yes. Jump. Run. There we go. That's, There's a, a, that's a frightening Corgi, but... Really is a terrifying Corgi. <laughs> Woof. Like okay. that Eyes. He's seen. He's seen it. <laughs> he's seen things. <laughs> All right. If we can't find another one in like I mean, one I'm, minute, I'm cool, with them. I'm cool with them. I, I kind of like this. This little. Nice. I agree. He looks like he's seen things. I like this one. This one looks nice. I hope. I hope this one can rock. Walk or run. Low poly cord. Yeah. Oh, that's a cute walk. That works. All right. I'm doing it. 
How do I check out? <laughs> uh, let's double check really fast that it does come as a FBX as well. Oh yeah, good call. Uh, before you splurge. How do I know? Um, let me find that one. It should say... Download type, see all files, FBX. Cool, perfect. Okay. Alright, here we go. Uh, go to my cart. second to do all this. Pulling it off screen. I wish that would go faster. Taking a second, sorry. No, no, it's just me uh, needing to type everything in. Oh, a PayPal checkout. Nice. That'll be fast. While you're doing that, I'm going to add a couple more uh, assets to the scene. Yes, please. Please do. Processing. Download the models on your purchases page. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to download this Corgi in FBX format, right? Yeah. And then do I just drag that right into the window? Um, yeah, you drag it into that, that assets panel. So here's the assets panel. I'm gonna should I create a folder for it called like Corgi or something? Probably a good idea, yeah. Because a lot of times in FBX we'll have a, a number of like materials and such attached to it. You want to kind of like muddy up your route. How do I rename? Um, it'll be in the inspector on the top right. Oh, got it. Rename up there. Do I need to include the textures and stuff too? Um, it should example? smartly bring them all in. If you just drag the FBX in, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, there's all the there's all the stuff, and so I'm. Can I rename it without breaking things? Because it came uh, in yeah. as like four zero. Which actually it turned it into. So um, right now the primary format within uh, Play Canvas for models is actually this JSON format that we make. Okay. Um. Which interestingly it looks like that Corgi comes with his platform. Let's see how it look at him. Oh yeah. Which we can probably get rid of that. We'll have to probably have to script it. It'd be kind of weird to kind of get rid of the platform. Um, that's doable. Um, so if you select that model, um, I don't know why then it come with its materials, though. That's interesting. Um, we might be able to bring that texture and see if we can apply it um, from that folder in your download. OK, yeah, so I've got, here. do I want asset or entity materials, or what am I? So let's go get the texture again really fast. That was in your folder. Um, and we'll drag that into there, too. I'm not sure why I didn't bring it in. Um, and oh my god, look how terrifying that looks. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a pretty a lot of like especially like animal textures like that almost look like someone's like skinned them. Like uh pretty pretty nuts. Um Okay. So then in the in the corgi. I think it should be on the corgi one. Um in in that in that material. So go back to the actual material you were just on it. Um and scroll down to its uh diffuse properties. Diffuse. Um, and we're going to choose a diffuse map. So where it says empty, press the pencil icon. 
um, and choose that. Oh, yep. there we go. Yeah, now we got a corgi. We got a corgi. All right. It's a cute little corgi. And then, um, and then if I wanted to do weird stuff in here, like if I wanted a, a ghost corgi, I could just come in here, change this to alpha, yeah, and then like make the corgi somewhat, yeah, spooky. Spooky, spooky corg. Nice. Spooky. Okay. All right. And then it looks like in here there's a box. If I just like delete this box, will it go away or? No, so that's the material the box is applied to. We can kind of, I guess, for now, hack it if you want. So go go back to the the simple material. Um and just we'll just make opacity zero. <laughs> oh, I got yeah, okay. We'll just hide it. Kind of a weird hack, but um we could also like through scripting, like maybe like um traverse like the the nodes and like remove that node completely, but sure. We'll just do this like for now. Yeah. Okay, so now if we go like put our our corgi down here, where's and I'll get rid of our box. Okay, there's our corgi, and is it on the surface now? So that's where a lot of those in that you see the top right in the kind of preview uh, view. Um, you see a thing that says perspective. Mm -hmm. You can actually change views there, so maybe you do like front, um, and then you can actually see your plane, see your corgi very like easily, like position it because you it's like you almost have like a two D. Oh, I gotcha. Of it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Corgi uh, on the surface. Then you can go back to your perspective camera and drag around again after you've done that. Great. Okay. So. And so I guess. We can move that that box script, the controls, to the corgi instead of the controls. So we can, if you want, on that corgi, like add a new script component and add the control script to that. And I'll okay. just delete the box altogether. Add a script, and then the script that I want to add is controls. And then if I go to my launch, okay. So it's moving around. Got a little bit of weirdness with the the box yeah. knocking out our our colors, but that's okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh wait, you just fixed it. I think I think it fixed itself. I think I think because there's like a, a weird opaque material the the renderers. Oh you. well and when it's close it's it's fine. Yeah. Um what I just realized though is we need to fix what the camera focuses on. So let me go down to that script and we're gonna choose the corgi. Good. Yep. Then if I come back here, now we're following the corgi, and apparently because oh, when it gets far enough away, that uh, doesn't. Yeah. So, so that's okay. We can fix that yeah. and make the camera follow a little less. Um, we'll maybe go like 0 0.05. Save that. Reload. And now hopefully it won't get far enough away, but it'll still have that kind of fun follow effect. Now oh, maybe not. It's okay. It's. That's okay. So then yeah. the next thing that we need to do is this if you want to, you could probably like change the distance in our because we have that that uh, attribute. We can just change it in the editor. Um Oh yeah, we could. Um so we can just make the distance like four. And then it's a little closer. Perfect. We'll get that, that okay. So I have a I have a mental checklist of two things and you can tell me if I've missed anything. So at this point what I think we need to do is we need to figure out how to get the corgi to turn in the direction that we're pointing. Mm -hmm. And we need to get that animation to play of the walking only right. when a button is pressed. Right. So we probably should start with the animation component. Let's add the animation component to the corgi and see if we can get it to play an animation. Because that's my, my, other, my other worry is, is whether or not that FBX had the animations exposed right. Um, we'll see here in yeah, a second. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll find out. It looks like the animation is there. Yeah, at least one. Of, it takes zero. It's good. Not the not the standstill take. So we do have the run. Um, so yeah, if you go to the corgi, um, like select it in the tree view or in the in the main view. Got it. Um, and we'll add an animation component. Essentially, that's just going to play animation clips. Um, and add asset, add that take, and hit um, add selection um, to the left there. Okay. Yep, and then it's done. Done. I got a little running corgi. Look at him go. Looks like he changes speeds. Oh, cool. 
I mean, that's uh, fine. We, we, I, we, I don't think we're we're gonna worry about. How does it see? Oh, interesting. So if we wanted to, we could go in and chop this up and say like, all right, at certain speeds, use this loop and and that stuff. But we yeah, we get scripted out in different sections of the take. Yeah, but I think that's okay. I think for now, we'll just have like when you press the arrow keys, we'll start the animation and then we can stop it when. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Which yeah, there's a whole aspect of like animation blending. Like, so if you had like an FBX that has a whole bunch of animations, you could smoothly transition from like a walk loop to like a swim loop or. Oh, um, yeah. Um, there's but, a whole uh, yeah. lot of animation in here, isn't there? Yeah, it's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> cool i mean that's i mean that's good though like that that means we have a whole bunch of stuff to play with eventually um as as time went on um so if i go in here is whoops that's the wrong button this one is our corgi yeah there's the animation look at him go <laughs> so if i walk forward that actually looks right which is pretty cool yeah okay so i'll take that i'm happy with that which I'm also going to scale Mr. Korg up a little bit too. Um, looks like sizing wise, we've seen he could stand to be a touch larger. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, pan, the pan the pan Korg was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of actually I might want to make him a little more, a little more fluffy. Could be fun. <laughs> now, now it kind of looks like a bulldog from the back. Yeah. There we go. Let me give him an extra long cord. Wait, is that uh... <laughs> <laughs> long cord? Did he do? Oh, this. Okay, so this animator uh, did the butt drag animation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Eco, we are 100% making a corgi. We uh, we have thus far just to just to recap here what we've done in the the 70 minutes that we've been going. We have been playing around in Play Canvas. We set up a um, a skybox that has this this kind of space material, um, which is built of uh, where is it? Here's our skybox. It's built of these six images, so it kind of makes a cube. We set up this plane, which is reflective and kind of glassy, a little bit transparent. Um, and then we went and found a Corgi animation on, um, where did it go? On Sketchfab. And, oops, that should be over here. And that, uh, that gave us the ability to actually place this Corgi in scene. And then we've got a, a coin here as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I grab that coin. I was just thinking we could probably add some like physics to that if we want. Have the coin like fall, and maybe the, the corgi can collect it or something. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be fun. Try to like gamify it again. I don't know how we're doing. On I guess we're almost out of time, but we're, we are running up on time. Um, so I, I guess at the very least, let's make the corgi face in the right direction and play the animation while we're moving. Yes, uh, let's do that. Okay. So, do I need to add a new script for that? We can just continue that with the control script if you want. I think. Yeah, like, let's do it. I would normally maybe like split them out um, just for like separation of kind of like concerns or whatever. But for sure. now we can we can just keep it all in the same script. Um, okay. So what so, we'll do is we'll say this section um, is for controlling position with key presses, and then we'll add another section down here. Is this going to work? Um, yeah, totally. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll do, uh, we'll do, we'll put that translate in one more if statement. We'll just kind of say if like, if X or Z are, you know, truthy, um, we'll do that translate and that's the same part. We'll do the, um, do the, uh, animation as well. Got it. Let's see if X, oops, or Z. Right? Anything else that you wanted me to do here? 
um next word yeah we'll do that and then so that's where we'll do the animation play as well um so that's where we can do um you can access the animation component that that script is uh, related to as well um okay that's the entity so you do that this that entity dot animation and that'll that'll access the animation component and then you can play a um an animation um which will be the actual clip name which i think was like take zero zero one or something like that um let's see what the clip is it name. is it this name uh i think it'll be the take name um it's a take zero zero one it might not be it might be that name up there okay. well we can we can control that one so that's okay but let's try this and see if that works um, um and then do we'll i need to make the animation stop at the beginning yeah so we'll in the actual um editor you're going to want to set the animations off as well um so back in the editor view um go, go back to corgi corgi um and deactivate right yeah and we'll leave loop on yeah okay um and then we'll also have to stop it when we're when we're not pressing the controls um so what the double check the api ref it's been a second since i've stopped an animation i mean i'm normally like blending between like an idle animation and a run animation or something like that so let's double check how we stop an animation yeah my my initial thought did not work <laughs> let's see animation component um Can I just set it to, can I set activate to false? Yeah, I think you can just set activate to false and that should do it. You could also maybe like try playing like null and like blending to null and it might go to the static pose. Not sure though. Um, so I think you just set it, it would be like activate equals false. Um, so probably set activate equals true inside the, the other bit as well. So this here? Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's try that. So if, if this is working. There should be no animation. No so animation. And now I'm going to hit play, or I'm going to hit a, an arrow. Oh, OK. So it didn't it didn't start arrow. there. We might actually have to fire the play as well, um, instead of just activating it. Um, do I want to do both? I believe so. Let's try that. Um, OK, so reload. I feel like we shouldn't have to, oh, but trying to play animation take one, which uh, doesn't exist. So, so maybe it is set this yeah, that. to call it Corgi Run, so it's a little easier to to yeah. use. Um, and then we'll go in here and set it to play Corgi Run. Reload. Oh. oh. It played after the key press. So like uh, while it's moving, did I do that wrong? Let's see. Let me try it without the activate. Oh, I wonder if, um, or I guess cause we're, we're calling play over and over again as well. Yeah. So, so we maybe want to, to kind of like check if it's playing is happening. And and not call play if playing is already happening. Okay. So we, we can just set that as like an in, in initialize or something like that. Like this stop playing is false. Um, Good call. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we'll say um, this dot is playing is false, and then if this dot is playing um, is false, then we will start it. And we will set this dot is playing to true. Perfect. And hopefully this gives us what we want. Let's find out. We might be able to set like a current time so it can start from like the run instead of like the tail wag. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, to set the certain time, we'll 
play blend time number. I think it'll be probably current time. Um, so we do like this uh, animation dot current time. Animation dot current time. Yeah, because well, the blend time is gonna like decide the amount of time it takes to blend between two animations. Because when you call play, usually a different animation is already playing. So I got you. What, I got you. I got you. Um, so there's actually a current time property that you'll just like set equal to like it's probably based in seconds. Okay. Um, so we can. Like one. It might be milliseconds. Um, I think it said seconds. It said. So is playing is false. Animation. Should I set it first? This entity animation. Let's set it after the play, um, so it knows what clip it's using for the current time. And it might work before it. Um, okay. Just being speculative at this point. Okay, I don't think I set it far enough. Let's set it four, three seconds in. Yes. Yay. Okay, but it didn't stop. Yeah. Um, so we would need like a, almost like a, if there's not a button being pressed. So. Which should be in that else, right? The else well, is it... kind of. Because it, it also if it cancels out, you don't want it to play the animation either. Um, so I think that else is good. Um, if both of those are zero, then, then it shouldn't be playing. Um, it's weird that setting activate to false doesn't do anything though. Yeah, do we get a? I'm curious if you can just try to set play to 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 like an empty, like just to null. Um, Let's try it. He was just running. No, doesn't Whoa. like that. Yeah, doesn't like that. <laughs> um. Well, what we could do, can we just play like a loop of the first three seconds, so it, or the two first two seconds where it's standing? Um, we, uh, we could try. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can define loop points inside an animation through this animation system. Um, True, if the animation will start, duration, that just gets the, anim the duration. I could set a weird timeout that would no. That's not. That's going to be too hard and too messy. Um, <laughs> if true, the first animation asset will begin playing when the scene is loaded. Okay, so that actually doesn't help us. The activate isn't what we want. So we want like to stop. Fire so one thing we could do is just completely disable the animation component as well. Um, okay. Just set the What's the and dot enabled false instead of activate. I think activate is just um, to play the animation on initialize. Um, so like enabled? Uh, enabled, yeah. Set that to false. And then do I need to set it to enabled true up here? Yeah. Let's see. Not playing. Still not playing. Huh. Let's see. So it uh Oh dot animation. Oh, yeah, animation. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna get there. Thank you, yeah. Nico. Yay. Nice. That's cool. All right. Moonwalk and Corgi. Um so then <laughs> If let's see, we we are out of time, but I'd love to figure out how to turn this turn this little buddy if we can. Yeah, yeah, certainly we can we can try to cover that really fast. Let's see. Um, what we could do is we kind of already know the direction the corgi is moving in based on our like our plus one minus one that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to do like another kind of look at with the Corgi. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's do this. Let's do, 
I'm trying to think of the best way to go about this. Um, okay, for for demonstration purposes, maybe what we can do is just have the have the corgi turn, but not not worry about the camera moving. So we can just like actually rotate the right the entity. Totally, totally. So maybe we can do that by like we know that if x is negative one, then we need to rotate ninety to the left. If x is zero zero, we stay. If z is one, we need to go forward. If x and z are one, then we need to go forty five. This might yes. mitten. Okay, maybe we don't have enough time to go like all the way through this. So it gets a little tricky if you try to go about it that way, but we can kind of leverage like look at instead. Okay. Uh, so I think we can do like a this that entity that look at, and essentially we kind of know the direction it's heading in. And I want to say we can just make a vector from that. Oh shit! That is so much smarter than what I was gonna do. <laughs> Um, so I think we can just take X um, and Z in this way. I think I could be just like totally off base here. Let's uh, try it. What happens? Let's reload. We're getting some weird behavior. <laughs> some, ah, look at him go. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, so this is amazing though. Like, I, this is this is the best game I've ever played. Oh, but look, <laughs> look, look! He turns as you go, or maybe nice. he doesn't. Yep, there he goes. There he goes. He's turning. So maybe we just need to turn the the thing on uh, stronger, like way stronger. Oh, I, I think part of it is is it's look at it as a world position. So what we need to do um, is get. We need to get essentially like the position of the corgi and and kind of where it's headed towards, if that makes sense. Um, so oh, we can you know get... what we also didn't do is wait. We I'm confused now. So like we can we can grab let's grab the corgi's position okay. uh, like at the beginning of this before we update it. Um, or even after we've updated, I'm trying to think of how best way to, essentially we want to get like the momentum of the Corgi. We want to know which way it's heading. Uh -huh. uh, so we need, because the probably the reason our look at didn't work is because that look at's based on world position. And we said, we said it's either like this one or negative one value, which is like right in the middle of our, of our platform. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So essentially we, we could even try to, to, um, might even be able to just do it this way. Um, so let's just like our like momentum, we'll call it that or something, is this. And let me double check how we add two vectors together really fast. Um, it should just be like a plus, but let me check three. Um, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, add. So let's do that. Um, momentum dot add. Okay. Um, and we'll do this dot entity dot get position. And let's see if we can pass in momentum now. And I just realized I did moment. Let's do it like that. Um, and let's see now how it looks. Okay, so it's like it's getting closer. It's yeah. still kind of swinging on us though, in an odd way. Is there, um, that's so wild because it like, oh, it's. It's okay. So we are pointing directly away from the center, no matter where we go. Do you see that? Oh yeah. So maybe our, our look at still not. Yeah. So it's it's always pointed away from the center of our platform is what's going on, and that's why things were getting weird. When I get to the middle of the platform, 
if I can get to the middle of the platform, it'll like do that. That thing where it like turned upside down. I'm not going to keep trying to do this. That's a, the worst game. Like try to find the center of a platform. <laughs> So another way, another way, like I would do it, we could we could go about it is instead of trying to get it from the momentum that we're making here, we could go, if we go back in that script, we can do like this dot um, position over here and make that that entity get position dot clone. Sorry for running out of time. Oh no, uh, we're okay. I uh, I I. Shot off a quick message, and I'm just gonna. We should finish this out because it's really cool. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll get position again. Um, okay, where and where are you writing this? I just saw up in the the top at line eight. We added the get position clone. Yeah. So let's actually make this like previous position. Okay. And then let's get a delta between our last two positions. Um, so you can you can kind of like subtract two um, bits. Okay. Here, one second. Sorry, someone's at the door. One second. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, okay, so while he's getting the door, I'm going to attempt to figure out how to get a delta. So let's just look at the docs. I'm going to do a search for delta. Um, now it's probably going to be under vectors. Vec3. And maybe sub subtracts a three dimensional vector from another in place. So that's probably right. Yeah, let's try it. Um, so I'm going to just do this. Um, cool. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worry. So, so what I what I've uh, I was looking at the docs and I found the sub method. Is exactly. that what you were going to use? Okay. Yeah, so sub I'll, two. So I'm going to do pause. You want to do sub two, mm -hmm. and then um, this dot previous position, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we can kind of just get like a difference between the two. And now, when we do the get position, is that that's a vec three, right? Um, yeah. And so, do we need to do? Because I thought looking at the the thing that sub was a three dimensional vector and sub two was a oh subtracts two three dimensional vectors from Can one another. Mm -hmm. so oh, 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 oh. Okay. So, so what we're what we're not doing here is we're not creating a third vector to to hold it. Yeah, which actually, let's do that as well. Let's keep, um, let's have also a preposition, also have like a this dot delta, so we're not like remaking delta over and over again. Okay, so we'll um, go to this dot delta equals, and that wouldn't be a new vec2, right? Vec3. Vec3. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to, a in that case, we need to do a vec, wait. This dot delta dot sub two. Is that right? Um, Am I understanding this API? It was so yeah, this, yeah, this delta, delta sub two. R, right. yep, R sub totally. two AB. Okay, all right. Totally. So now, if I relaunch, oh, we didn't change anything yet. So we just have the delta, and then we want to look at the delta. Um. Which I guess well, we're doing a lot of duplicate work that I guess the momentum would have already given us. This is just how I would write a script that would be like abstracted out. Okay. Um, I'm just realizing that I'm making us making our life harder. Um, but we're gonna keep going this way because this is eventually something we can we could extract out, out into like a, a like a look script. Okay. Um, um, so there's a question in the chat. Uh, Eco, the difference between sub and sub two is that sub is one vec three subtracting a second vec3 and modifying itself. Um, vec or sub2 
is one vec three subtracting two vec threes and up sorry it's one vec three that is the the uh the difference of the two arguments so we're saying like a minus b equals c uh or r in this case whereas this one is a equals a minus b right yeah so essentially like sub sub is going to do it in place meaning like the vector that we call sub on is going to get modified um and we pass a different vector into it whereas sub two is going to it's still going to modify the vector that we're calling it on but that we're going to pass two vectors into it and not modify either of them we're just going to modify like the vector we're calling it on yeah so th this would be like the way if we don't if we don't want to mutate state then these two stay unchanged and and this this is the one that gets modified when we when we're right. this. okay exactly. all right so um so we've got this dot delta you, which you said is kind of a it's a little bit of duplicate work to create what we did with momentum exactly yeah i think we, we could probably still have solved it with momentum um okay but i think this way is again gonna be something that we could abstract out into a different script eventually and, and we can do we can do more things with this um this way um so i think like the last thing to do now is like with this excuse me with this delta um we can set a uh um, the look at again um, using the position plus the delta. Um, so this dot pos, or I guess we would want to do. How do we? So for add, because it's going to add in place if we do it right. Um, so it, it's not going. We're going to do any kind of add or anything now. Um, we're going to get rid of this momentum stuff that I was doing, um, and we can bring in something kind of like this, like nc dot look at. Um, and let's uh, let's do something like um, essentially we want to build build the where it's looking at because what we did is we got a vector of kind of the like the reverse of where we're coming from. Does that make sense? Like that delta is always going to be like the opposite of the look at, right? Um, because the delta would be like if we use the delta, we would be the corgi would be running butt first. Mm hmm Okay. Um so we can kind of build it just like this. Um where we set the look at based on like position plus the delta, like keep the y and position plus the delta again. Okay. And that should do it. Um we might eventually want to alert that as well. Um uh, Position. Entity position clone is not a function. Oh, that's a uh, fix that really fast. Fix that. I was I wasn't invoking get position. Oh, got it. Oh. Okay. Do we still have it broken? It looks like now. Yeah, it's still it's still facing center. Always facing center. So what are we? Oh, I guess we we have to restash our previous position. We didn't fix that. Um, for this dot previous position, um, I'm gonna make that copy um, position. That's problem. We're, we're keeping previous position the same all the time, which okay. is an issue. So all I did was add this uh, this uh, previous position dot copy. So it's gonna copy what position was. Okay. Um, instead of staying at zero zero zero. Ah, uh, I get what. Okay, so now it's kind of. Ah, uh, what the heck are we doing? Previous position copy. Clone. Where are we actually using? And I guess the other issue is okay. Again, this is a, I normally write this again to be in a separate script mm -hmm. to be called kind of after motion. So if we move these calculations after we've moved our corgi, 
um, down here. Mm -hmm. um, see if that does it. Right, Sorry. so now uh, it'll be calculating against. There we go. Okay, so we're close, but now our corgi is, is moonwalking. Backwards. Um, so in that's, that case, that's fine. We could just we just swap it out, right? We just yeah. minus. Well, in that case, we probably can just use the delta. Um, Let's try it. But keep the actual position, yeah. Oh wait, hold on. Are we in? No, that wasn't it. Okay, um, so let's undo that. Maybe. Yeah, I guess it's swap that like you were saying. Trap. All right, delta doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's just the difference again. The funny thing is, I'm pretty sure that that delta is just there. Um, it is. Look at that. We got a corgi walking in the right directions. Corgi simulator in space. All right, we're going to sell this game for $300. Uh, if you would like to send payments, pre-orders are open now. <laughs> All right, I've, man, that's awesome. That is so cool. So um, I think this is a good stopping point. So, uh, so Cody, what, what should people do next? Like, what's a good, uh, a good place to go from here? Um, so where I was going to try to go, um, and I'm sorry I made us take so long on some of the Corgi scripting, ran into some weird issues there. Um, I think, I think next, like, I probably want to smooth out some of that Corgi rotation, um, which we can do with another kind of similar lerp thing like we did to the camera. Um, so he's not just kind of like snapping to like, right. you know, very abruptly. Um, so we could probably lerp some of that that look at position so essentially we would just be like using we, we'd stash like one more back of of the the look at mm -hmm. and that is like what we're actually going to set it to and we always alert based on the the value that we just calculated sure yeah let's move it out i do that um the thing i was thinking of the coin is we can make that coin kind of respawn every time corgi runs into it nice so we could just kind of like every so, time the corgi runs into it set a new position so are there, um, like, if we wanted to send people to, for example, uh, some educational resources, like if they want to get started and they want to start using Play Canvas on their own, um, mm -hmm. what's the, where, like, where would a, a good follow-up to this be, like, if they want to start digging in deeper? Yeah, so, I mean, the doc site has quite a bit to it. Um, there, there's, there's several really good tutorials there um, in, like, the tutorial section. Um, no tutorials? And you can get into animation and it gets into like blending. It gets into like, there's a demo for set, making like a multiplayer game using glitch as your back end. Um, cool. That's pretty fun. We, we can both go to that tutorial right now. If you click on that tutorial, it's going to use, use as glitch as the back end, which is kind of neat. That's awesome. Um, and I'll go to that tutorial too. Looks like a lot of people are going there. <laughs> it looks like you can kind of like move around with WASD. Um, Oh, nice. And here, I'll join that tutorial, and you can see my character move around, too. Uh, let's see. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like they have physics on it. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's cool. So now we just like fall forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, very, very cool stuff. So yeah, Cody, where should people go to find you uh, if they want to if they want to keep up with you? Um, so yeah, uh, mostly Twitter. I probably spend too much time on Twitter. Um, that's just halves. Um, I'm also on like CodePen and GitHub. I'm always making like dumb things on CodePen and weird experiments on GitHub. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, y'all. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, make sure you check the schedule. We've got some really exciting stuff coming up. Um, we are going to have, uh, let's see who's coming on. We've got Chris Biscardi coming on on Tuesday. 
uh, we are going to put together a, a sticker shop for the Party Corgi website. I've got Rachel Andrew coming on. We're going to learn CSS Grid. That is going to be awesome. Uh, I have Thor. You may remember Thor from one of the very first episodes of Learn with Jason. He's going to come back. We're actually going to do a series. We're going to do four episodes on Stripe and different ways to take money. So from uh, products and then so this is going to be selling products. Uh, we've got Dan Mall. That's going to be amazing. Then we've got Nick DeJesus coming back on. We're going to talk about donations. So Thor and Nick are going to be on the show. Uh, we're going to do donations through Stripe. Um, Jinsi Uman, who's a, a friend of mine here in Portland, she's going to come on, teach us how to do an Alexa skill. I'm going to do a um, an Alexa uh, Echo, Amazon Echo giveaway on that one. So make sure you stay tuned there. Uh, then we got Thor coming back. We're going to add Apple Pay and Google Pay to site. So like one touch payments. Um, we're going to continue on with the secret sandwich saga. So we've had uh, we had Marissa on to do information architecture. We had uh, Maggie Appleton on to do logo design. We're going to have Leslie on to do uh, the actual UX design. And then following this episode, we're going to have Joel Hooks on and he and I are actually going to build that app. Um, and then Thor's coming back on. We're going to do subscription management. That's not all. We've got lots more coming. So make sure you uh, you subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe on Twitch. You can follow the calendar. There is a, uh, a calendar here. Um, there are so many cool things coming on. I would I would love to have you all join us. Cody, thank you again for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Chat, stay tuned. We are going to raid, and we will see you next time.